Well, hello there, my little snowy dumplings, and welcome to another unscripted review. This one will be Halo 5, and the final game in the Halo series. Well, until Halo Infinite comes out, and yes, I will be doing a review of that. Also, before we get started proper, spoiler warning, there will be hefty story spoilers, hefty revelations, ruining the story for all time. As long as we know this going in, Everything's good, everything's sexy, good. Enjoy the show, babies. So I'm going to start by addressing people's dislike of the game. Um, fair enough. Anyway, right, I'm going to talk a wee bit more about the intro. The intro's a bit strange. I like the intro. It's very flashy. There's parts of it, the setup's fine. The first few minutes, they're going to rescue Halsey on this planet of ice and jobby. And it's set up like a, kind of like a Call of Duty, actually. Only with, you know, Spartans and mad suits and everybody's in different coloured suits, which I think is a bit strange. It's meant to be part of a military. Why would everybody have a, like, a personalised colour? So you can go, oh, there's that prick. Boom. Oh, the leader's in blue. Everybody else is in different colours. Oh, pop. Thought it was really strange. You'd think they'd all be in green or they'd all be in just, like, generic Spartan uniform type armour like Master Chief I'm pretty sure they just mass produced that seems a bit strange but never mind. Oh the female Spartans uh, I was in four, I think her name's Palmer or something like that just a, a wee aside anyway I'm going to let you watch the the sort of second half of the final part of this intro which is it's cool looking but it's very Power Rangers 1990s cartoon. It's, it's a wee bit detached from what I sort of expect from a Halo game, but I still quite liked it. It just seemed a little over the top, like, you know, like you get a really awesome, gritty action movie, and then Michael Bay makes a sequel. This is kind of what this is like. It's a bit, it's a bit strange, but anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll talk a wee bit more after the fact. Copy that, Tanaka. Spartan Buck, online and ready. Spartan Vale, online. Weapons free. Contact! You see what I mean? It is cool, but it's just a bit off. It's not very fit in a halo, I don't think. Even though I know we've seen Master Chief fling himself out of spaceships and he's literally crash landed on Earth from space and survived. But there's just something about that. It's a bit, a bit overproduced. There's no sort of feeling of danger. It's just like very, very, very over choreographed. Do you know what I mean? Kind of like how the lightsaber battles in the prequel trilogy feel compared to every other fucking lightsaber battle, it's just, it's just a bit strange, I mean I do like it but it's, yeah it's off and I'm kind of going through this whole game feeling that 
it's off a wee bit. I mean, you've got some nice new abilities, and you you can run. Run's no longer a power you select. You just you know click in the, the thumbstick, and away you go. And there's iron sights for some reason. It's like, are you trying to make this Call of Duty? Because we don't really come to Halo for Call of Duty. And the more annoying thing about the iron sights is that every time you hit, you're whipped right out of it, and it's fast as fuck. And I'm like, trying to reorientate my target is just a pain in the ass. So don't get hit if you're in iron sights, because for some reason you, you stop being in iron sights. At least in Call of Duty, when you're hitting iron sights, you, the camera shakes. You have a harder time aiming, fair enough. But you're all know, whipped right at it, which I don't like. Other abilities is that when you run and you push the RB button, you can dash and you can go through like destructible, weakened environments, which is pretty cool. If you press RB while you're jumping, you can do like a ground pound, and I really love this. I hope this is kind of still in Halo Infinite to a degree because I think it's really quite a lot of fun. Other changes they've made is the game now feels more like Left 4 Dead because you're with a squad of three other teammates. Even playing in single player offline mode, you have AI following you around. So when you get knocked over, you know, die, they'll come and resurrect you if they're quick and smart enough. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. Again, another strange change to the game is that. No, if I want Left 4 Dead, I'll play Left 4 Dead. I cut my Halo for a very specific experience, and it just doesn't feel. This kind of feels like playing Halo 4 with mods. It looks a bit like Halo. It feels a bit like Halo, but there's just an awful lot of tweaking that didn't need to be tweaked. And then you've got this, whatever this is. Halo with mods is what Halo 5 is. But don't get me wrong, I don't think it's a bad game in any way, shape or form. The gun battles. The gun battles are some of the best in the series. I'm, I'm, I'm having so much fun jumping about the place, ground pounding people into the dirt. I can... Yes, it's just, it's all there, but it's just it's so strange. It's like, this is more like a spin-off. Had Halo 5 Guardians just be called Halo Guardians. And it's like, this isn't a mainline game, this is a spin-off, or we try something a bit different. Kind of the way that they did with um, Far Cry New Dawn and Wolfenstein Youngblood to, you know, lesser success, I would say. Although I did prefer New Dawn to Youngblood. Youngblood was crap. I liked it at first, and then the more I played it, I was like, mm, no, it's not It's not good. So it's kind of like that, it's like this should have been an off an offshoot, a spin-off of the series. Another big gripe, and everyone has this gripe, is with the advertising. They sort of painted this picture of a big rivalry between Chief and this new Spartan called Luck. And I'm like, cool, it doesn't translate into the game whatsoever. Stay where you are. One one seven, stand down. Sir, you are absent without leave. This is your one chance to come home peacefully. Blue team, stand down! I have a job to do. Cortana's our concern now, sir. Like hell she is. <laughs>
they have a small tete a tete, a small fisticuffs, have a wee fight, and then that's it. And they're all pals again. It's yeah, it's strange. A split campaign thing's no good. People didn't like it when it happened in Halo 2, and people don't like it now, especially when the first mission isn't Master Chief, it's fucking Locke and his crew. Buck's back in it from Halo ODSC. He's now a Spartan for some reason. Did he have. I thought Spartans were genetically modified. Children? So surely they'd have to be children to be genetically modified, unless they've just shoved him in a Spartan suit. It doesn't make any sense. I don't know the lore behind that either. It's probably in some fucking comic somewhere. Some book, some other piece of media that I... Yes, we, we went over that in Halo 4, didn't we? Fucking pile of shite. Here's another gripe coming your way, Fast and Furious. Oh, Jesus, don't say Fast and Furious. They went to space in a car with rockets strapped to it. Didn't realise that, you know, normal sports cars were space worthy. Anyway. Is that, um, a lot of the cutscenes I've been finding that, like, some of them could have been gameplay. The bit in the first mission where you rescue Halsey and you get to the end of the level. And there's this really lovely cutscene of a big fight between you and a group of elites. Could have been in the game. That could have been a boss fight. Could have been something a bit more interesting. They made the elites look like clumsy. I mean, they make the elites look like clumsy bastards through the entire game. It's like, how stupid are you? I mean, they're dumb as hook. They just got a complete pacing and it's like and it doesn't sort of translate from you know from the actual gameplay when the elites can actually kick your ass quite easily it's weird I think I should talk about things that I do like what do you think talk about things that I do like right, I do like the gameplay the, the 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 graphics the gameplay fucking the whole setting is amazing there's new Promethean enemies now they come in various shapes and sizes there's like more sort of humanoid looking ones. You'll come across a big boss one called the, the Warden Eternal. And he's basically the reoccurring boss fight through the entire game. I don't really have a problem with this. I know a lot of folk did. Sometimes it's not even really telegraphed as a boss fight. You just, you just turn up at party of level and you leather them and it fucks off. Then you've got the Guardians. Over there in the ocean! Guardians rising! Arbiter, it's another one of those. I wonder. Guardians look amazing. A brilliant job in building the atmosphere with those things. Don't fight any of them though. You do run in the back of one towards the end of the game. That's that's amazing, isn't it? I actually really did quite like that wee bit. Reminded me of the endings from the old Halo games, only oh, this isn't an ending. This is a this is a during during the campaign mission on. And you're chasing down the chief. And then you find out that Cortana's no actually destroyed and she's the bad guy. The, yeah, people are fucking raging at that. I thought that was a great idea. I, I actually really do think that was a that was a good be a blindsided folk. I, I like being blindsided sometimes. It's the same idea with John Connor and uh, Terminator Genesis. Ends up being the bad guy. You could argue it's not actually John Connor. He's been sort of taken over by nanobots that have overridden his own actual thoughts and feelings. And it's it's just a Terminator that looks like John Connor, but. Whatever. You can spin that in any way you like. I liked it. And that's all that matters. Right? <laughs> well, it is in the end of the day. The opinions are subjective. You can you can like something and dislike something that doesn't make you right or wrong in either direction. Just, this is a weird game. It's, it's something I recommend picking up because it is a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. There's just some things in it, I'm just like, why did you do that? <laughs> like the, the Left 4 Dead sequence. Why did you make this game look like Left 4 Dead? That's no Halo. What did you put iron sights in it for? That's no Halo, but I don't really want to say, oh, well, you can't do this, because the games do need to evolve over time. And it does, for the most part, feel like a Halo game. And I'm having a lot of fun with it. It's a little on the short side, about five, six hours. I uh, expect a wee bit more from my Halo games, maybe around about 10 or 12. 
So that could have, but that that sort of comes into the the, the cutscenes that could have been the actual gameplay. And there's a couple of these things you'll, you'll probably figure them out and notice them yourself. But all, all in all, I do I do enjoy it. It's probably the worst of the Halo mainline games anyway, um, but not by terribly much. Other than the, the massively botched release of the Master Chief Collection, I don't think 343 are making as big an arse of it as people would claim. But that's my opinion. Again, opinions are like arseholes, and everybody's got one. And everyone wants to show them off. Like I'm doing here right now, which is cool, that's fine. Just have civil discussions, people. There's no, no, no use to want to kill each other over a fucking video game. You know, we're, we're no football fans here. But I I like to think we're a wee bit more rational than sports fans. Well, that'll have ruffled some feathers, good. Well, uh, a wee bit of uh, introspection there is what's needed if that's upset you, because usually when things upset you, they're close to the truth. Aren't they? Yes, they are. I'm offended. You're only offended because you know it's true. Fuck off. <laughs> Change. Be better. I'm, that's what I'm trying to do, but with varying degrees of success, I may add. It's not an easy, it's not an easy transition to do. It's not, it's not, it's not easy to change. So I'm hoping Halo Infinite rights a few of the wrongs from this game, but I would really like the battles to be as frantic as this game because it's a lot of fun. Other cool things you, you get to do in this is you go to um, Sang Helios. Actually. Tanaka, if I could ask a favor, just say a word or two. Come a long way together, a long way yet to go. Let's make a good jump like we mean to, and handle fools like we need to. 90 seconds to insertion point. And may buck by the first round when we get back. <laughs> We get through this. I'll buy the whole damn bar. Fire team Osiris. The light is green. Which is the home world of the Sanghili, which are the elites. And you'll meet up with Arbiter, and Arbiter's got an awesome fucking energy sword, and it's red or orange if you prefer. And you'll get to basically destroy what's left of the Covenant. There's a sort of civil war occurring on Sang Helios. It's, it's, it's basically the elites that want to be free of the Covenant and Covenant sympathizers, and you get to absolutely spank their asses. And then the the Prometheans show up and fucking destroy the place. Well, destroy. The particular part you're in. Aye, nah, it's good. For the most part. A lot wrong with it. Yep, absolutely. 100% agree. Uh, I think you should um, maybe give it a bit more of a, an easy time. It's not as bad as you think it is. It's actually quite fun, especially if you can get a co-op game going. Yeah, well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheerio. Guardians, leave without us. There be some way to... Osiris, get your asses in gear. I'm coming in hot and you best be ready to go. Move! We're on board. Hang on! Open your eyes, Doc. You're missing all the fun.
hunt them to the last. The day we extinguish the Covenant's light. Ah!